Keeping in the theme of the Tesla of RVs, we're also going to bring you another prototype today. Keith, yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate Good. it. Thank you for having us. We're yeah. excited about this. Yeah, us too. So can you tell me a little bit about it? Absolutely. So what we've got here is the concept 100% all electric RV from Winnebago Industries. This is a project that's been a couple years in the making. It started out with the Ford Transit chassis, and this was built down in Kansas City. And then we worked with a company in Colorado that pulled out the engine, transmission, put in an electric motor, a couple big batteries, and then tied into the Ford control systems. And then we looked and redesigned the interior, built that out for a completely new experience. A couple things about this vehicle, right now it's got about 125 miles of range. Part of that is because when we started this a couple years ago, the battery tech wasn't as strong. If we redid it today, it'd be about 170 miles. So we're definitely working the right direction. A couple things that are nice about it is when it comes to charging, you can DC fast charge at any non-Tesla RV or electric vehicle charging station. So Electrify America, EVGO, ChargePoint. You can fast charge in about 45 minutes. If you don't have access to an EV charge station, you can charge at any campground, just plug into the 50 amp pedestal, you'll be charged up by morning. A lot of neat things going on. A couple other interesting points. The air conditioner is 350 volts and the water heater is 350 volts. Wow. So we really put a lot of thought into understanding how the electrification side of the equation ties into the RV side of the equation, trying to make for a, a efficient and enjoyable experience. Now, I have a stupid question. Why 350 volts for the, the air conditioner? So the reason for that is most modern electric vehicles run around that 350 volt voltage. Okay. Now, when you look at electrical system, there's always a little bit of, we'll call it an efficiency tax whenever you convert, convert to a different voltage or invert to AC power. So by going directly from 350 volt DC, using it at the same 350 volt DC, it allows for much more efficient operation. They have really made this thing a spacious vehicle to begin with. Now, one thing I want you to understand is this is a prototype. So that means everything you see in here could change in the next couple of years. I know people have commented before about design or what should be changed or what would work, but this is a prototype of what they have available of what this could be. And it's gonna come fully loaded. So I've heard some of these vehicles have a way to recharge and stuff as they drive. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so this vehicle is equipped with what's called regenerative braking. And when you looked at an electric vehicle, it takes a lot of energy to get it up to speed. Once you're up to speed, it doesn't take as much to maintain that. But then when you slow down, it, there's the ability to capture some of that energy. So that's what regenerative braking does. When do you think that we're gonna see the production date on this? Hard to tell. I think we're looking at years rather than months, but our group helps all the different business units understand technologies and implement it. So it'll be up to the business units to decide how and when they go to market. So, I, you know, I'm curious on where you guys came up with the design ideas and, and your thought process going through this. Yeah, absolutely. So really what we were trying to do was understand how the electrification or electric vehicle experience tied in with the RV experience. Right. So we were able to get this electric chassis that we worked with our partners to create, but then even redesigning the interior, we wanted to take a completely different look, start at the bottom and make sure that we really selected all the appropriate appliances. One thing we kept in mind while we were working on the layout, working on the finishes, working on the appliances and subsystems is, we didn't want to diminish the RV experience at all. We wanted to improve it. So this still has all the features that you would expect in an RV of this size. It's got a microwave, it's got a sink, it's got a fridge, it's got a portable induction cooktop, it's got a shower, it's a black toilet system where we've got 25 gallons of fresh water, 17 gallons of gray water, and 11 gallons of black water capacity. So it still is functional, you're still able to use it. And the great thing is those 86 kilowatt hour batteries that power the drivetrain can also be used for all of the house systems of the RV. So it truly is a very integrated experience. Do you guys have any additional power input that's available for it? Yeah, so for this one, we did choose to add a little bit of solar, but the solar doesn't directly charge the traction battery. We went a slightly different route. 
There's enough systems that run off a 12 volt, be it lights, USB chargers, compressor fridge, that we took a solar panel and are tying that directly to the 12 volt system to help keep that maintained. So yes, it does, but not to the extent that it can charge the entire vehicle. And how many watts? 200. So why is it you guys didn't decide to do what some other people are doing and go the hybrid route? With the Advanced Technology Group, our role is to look at technologies that are in the future, you know, maybe three plus years out. We considered going the option of hybrid, but really when we looked at everything that we wanted to do with this vehicle, our main focus was learning about the technology, learning about the customer, and understanding how to go in this space and do it well. So we thought by focusing on all electric, no, no backup, no generator, 100% electric, that would provide the most opportunity for learning. Now we know that as time goes on, there may be some other you know, options that fall kind of in the middle as it looks to be commercialized, but that's one thing that'll sort itself out with time. You guys have any comments whatsoever, please put them in the comments below, questions, thoughts, ideas, or even concerns, and I will direct them to Winnebago. If Nick's available, we'll yeah. talk to him and we will get those answers for you. As always, thank you for traveling down the banisters and we hope you keep stepping into your dreams. <laughs>